And I'm probably the only person skinny enough to fit through this hole because it is not very big. Oh, that's tight. We have a three inch spray trailer. We run three inch plumbing into here when we fill it because it's way faster than two. Well, this one doesn't have that. So I got to go inside and cut a hole. There's only a way to do it. It's from the inside only. So we got this under the winch and I'm going to winch myself down and up. And I'm probably the only person skinny enough to fit through this hole because it is not very big. And guys, it stinks in here too, by the way. Um, he needs to be well rounded to fit that diameter. So I think he, I think he'll okay. make it. That doesn't smell that bad in here. The eyes just burn a little bit. So, just a quick little education what goes on in a spray tank. It doesn't just sit in here, it's what's called agitation. Agitation is these right here. And basically, you just some of the pressure of the spray system to recirculate the product that's in this tank, and it sprays these nozzles in all directions, constantly agitating the mix, so that way the products that you have don't separate, because you want to keep them combined together. Okay, I'm out. It's nice to be out of that. Um, we still gotta try to tighten the nut on it and then I'll finish putting this three inch line right here. Connect it up there. And then just the uh, tank level and then the tank rinse pipe gotta be connected. And then I gotta throw a scap over the tank. And then I think the tank then is good to go until we fill with water and find drips everywhere, which hopefully won't happen. And there's definitely some stuff I gotta do this boom still. Some cracks some reinforcement, and I think I'm gonna change all the accumulators, the diaphragm accumulators and all the cylinders, four of them, I got four on order. Gonna change them all because I think they're all shot. This thing does not float very well at all. It's solid when you hit a bump. That's a good indication that those things have lost their nitrogen. So, we'll get that done. I think the underside of the sprayer is good to go. I've got everything connected to the tank. It took a little bit. There's agitation like I showed you earlier ports, there's the port for the tank level, there's all kinds of stuff, tank wash. So I've got lines running everywhere, as you can see, but I think it's on. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go grab a port of power, and I'm gonna try to straighten these leaf springs. They're a little narrower than the stock ones that we got. We have, these are replacements, because the stock that were on this thing were destroyed, but they're a little narrower. While the U-bolts that hold the leaf springs down to the axle are wider, and the leaf springs are slightly turned in there. Only this side, this side's been fine, that side turned. I tried hammering on it, didn't do any good. I'm gonna try the Porter Power, see if I can push on the other end, I'm gonna straighten them out, and then I might put little uh, spacers in here to keep them turning again. There we go. Perfect. Good. A success straighten them right out so let's see if they stay at least i know i can fix that with the porter power these things uh you gotta remember when you have these tools because it's like there's a million ways to skin a cat but uh there's only a couple tools that really make it efficient a lot of times you forget to even own it that's the problem about having all the tools in the world is you gotta remember you have it sitting on a shelf somewhere waiting to use here you're beating onto the hammer trying to find the most Simplest solution to fix it when it's right there in the box, waiting to be used. I'm sweating. There you go, the sweatshirt. Speaking of sweatshirt, 
if you guys didn't know, we do have merchandise available. We're teamed up with Farm Focus. They're a great, great company based on Nebraska, farm oriented, and they handle our merchandise, hats, shirts, all kinds of good stuff. So you guys head over to farmfocus.com slash Welker Farms, or go on the link down in our description and go get some merch. It's good stuff. We wear it all the time. I actually really like some of these shirts that we have and I'm excited there's some new ones coming. You guys are gonna like them. So go check it out. Okay, back to work. About a year ago, Big Brute blew a uh, hydraulic hose on the steering. And we had to leave it in the field and grab the hose off and make a new hose and put it on. Well, the rest of the hoses are all cracked out and we've been meaning to change it. We just haven't gotten to it and I'm gonna get to it now. Got the fittings, let's change them and fix them. Now, Faja over here, he's got something going on. See all those little tiny bulbs up there? Look at what he's doing over here. What do you have to say for yourself, Pops? Um, I don't know. Sometimes it gets a little uh, dark, a lot of uh, spring work that's coming ahead. So I kind of want to lighten it up a little bit. There it is. There's your pun. Uh. <laughs> when you're operating a crimper, I like to think I'm a professional in my own way, but not a professional in this. You gotta look on here, look at the chart and say, okay, what size of hose are you doing? Are you doing three eighths, half inch or whatever you're gonna do? And it says 733 is the set of dies. So there's a stamp number on the dies. I have the 733 in it right now. Now this little dial here lets me adjust how much I wanna crimp it. And depending on what type of dies you have in there, it will really matter. So now I got all the fittings here. Let's put the hose together and let's crimp these things. So that big brute, this beast, can uh, drive around and not have to worry about those hoses blowing. Don't worry, there'll be other hoses that blow on this thing, but those ones won't, so that's good. Let's crimp. <laughs> Empty, how did that happen? Had this place packed full not long ago. Must mean it's getting warmer outside. Well, actually, it is a little bit. It was surprisingly, I had another winter storm come through and put some snow on the ground, it was cold, but today is nice, warming up. So and since everything's outside, I guess I get to work outside, which is great, because uh, it's nice getting out of the shop, even though we got this great lighting in here. These Keystone lights are pretty bright. So, guess what came? Lights. For Magnum, never finished that last time. I'm gonna put them on right now. Get them on the Magnum, and then we got some uh, tie rod, ball joints, what do they call them? Yeah, a bunch of different stuff that's loose in the steering on that. We wanna tighten it up. Auto steer would like it a lot better if it was tight, because then it doesn't have to overcorrect the steering wheel to get the steering tire to do what it wants to do. So we found out those are war, I've got new ones. My dad's going to get them right now. He's on his way, so he'll come back to the parts. So I'm just gonna work on this Magnum on the other side of this wall.
go. He's all tight now. I'm gonna check the fluid in the axle just to make sure it's good. We, I think we checked it when we replaced a uh, wheel seal not long ago, but it is absolutely amazing how many tools it takes to do a job. It's just nonstop back and forth between the toolbox and to the job and toolbox into the job and over and over and over again. But these ball joints, or what do you want to call them? <laughs> these uh, uh, tie rod joints and the steering, they were all shot. This one, yeah, it's bad. So GPS will love that. It'll be tight, steering will be accurate, rolling will be good. Wiggly Wagster, happy man. <laughs>